it's just trying to, um, you know, in my rehearsals or practice swings, it's just very, very connected and around me where my arms don't feel like they get away from my body at all. When I do that correctly, it seems pretty simple to hit the ball, hit my start lines. And when I hit my start lines well, I typically play well. A lot has to do with tempo. Just committing to the shot. I'm a big feel guy. Turn your body and club through together. One of a select few golfers to ever tie a Tiger Woods record when he won the 2015 Masters in a romp. Jordan Spieth is popular both on the golf course and off. Uber exciting to watch. Jordan keeps his fans on the edge of their seats every time he tees it up. A wizard with a wedge in his hand, Spieth is a sneaky good iron player who hits the ball the appropriate distance very often. And even though his swing is a work in progress, it is super reliable and there is a lot you can learn from him. This is Sandwich, he'll be looking to go right at this one. You were quite bullish on his chances here. We know he's got a tremendous record, and look out! Oh, Jordan Spieth! You think the golden child is back? You're gonna need a favorable bounce here. Let's see if it stops. Oh. Let's see if it stops. Let's see if it drops. Are you kidding me? Uh -oh. oh my goodness! There's a lot you can learn from Jordan Spieth. But the first thing is, is that success comes from what is done behind the scenes. And what he has done behind the scenes is work awfully hard with Coach Cameron McCormick to get his swing to a place, honestly, where he feels more comfortable. A place that was more reminiscent of how he swung the club a few years ago. And that is having the club a bit more on line at the top of the swing. And he does so through a pretty much idiosyncratic warm-up routine or practice rehearsal. The club travels in, it travels up, sort of travels over, and it looks sort of lifty. But what that gets is it galvanizes the feel for Jordan where the club shaft is more on line at the top, and that allows him then to use his words, turn and burn, which is where he rotates his body and ostensibly removes excess hand action from the golf swing. Now, Saying all that, we have to bear in mind always that as you look at Jordan, he plays with a very weak left-hand grip. Proof of that weak left-hand grip, the forefinger, the glove forefinger visible there, and you will see that show even more as we go back in the golf swing. That weak grip has the left hand turned to the left. Now what that's gonna cause is a very open club face unless you match things up and you maneuver around there. And right here, you'll see Jordan with the first matchup move. He bows or flexes that lead wrist a whole lot. And now look how much that forefinger is poking out there. It's not a problem. It's just a function of how he's really twisting on that glove wrist. The extension thereof, of course, is a very powerful, very strong club face, which, as a reminder, is the only way you get to message the golf ball. So learn from Jordan. Don't care what you look like, as long as the club face is square and appropriate. To continue to go from here, you'll see his trail legs straighten a little bit more than most, but that allows him to turn his core. There's a lot of wind up here through the middle and through the hips. But here's the kicker. Once again, you can see that glove wrist is rarely bowed, and that gets the club face a little bit here on the closed side. But that allows him then to turn and burn. Now here he goes. You're gonna see him plug into the ground as he transitions. You can see the middle begin to unwind. And as we stop him right there, that is the money move. Look how the hips are opening up. Look how the chest is still pretty square. Arms are in front of him. But once again, notice how that lead wrist is bowed. And it has the club face here very, very square. From there, it's just a question of turning and burning. Look at him turn open, way open. Hips are almost pointing at the target. He's pushed up from underneath him, but look at this. It's what it's all about, people. Look at that club face. Square, right over the back of the ball. Even better than that, look at how the shaft of the golf club is right up his forearm here. That is just golden. And all of the moves have been to put him in that place. Now from here, a little chicken winging on the follow through, but a big drive of the body, the free flowing follow through, a drive that's pummeled down there. And let me tell you, Jordan Spieth is pretty
pretty long off the tee. So with all these moves, he does it consistently and reliably. He's powerful and he is consistent. Doing an interesting rehearsal on the takeaway, he does this little, he kind of yanks the club into the inside. He has gotten so much better with this club. He's longer than he has been in a couple years off the tee. This one is punished. That is ideal down there a long way. He's actually picked up yardage from one season to the next. Yeah, he is playing some confident golf right now. Free flowing swing from speed. He starts hitting fairways, look out. Really cool view of how Jordan hits the ball surprisingly long off the tee because when he swings it, he's not gonna blow your hair back with speed. But what he does is put a very heavy hit on the ball. And the ball sort of tumbles through the air and hits the ground and goes. And when he's at his best, he can really move them out there. Average on tour, he averages, I would say, about 307, eight, nine yards off the tee. So not short by any stretch of the imagination. And the way he does that is by presenting a de-lofted club face through impact with an ascending angle of attack, something like this. So basically like a topspin forehand in tennis. So let's dive into how he does that. First off, have to bear in mind, of course, this grip. And if we look into it, if we were counting knuckles on his glove hand, you can sort of see one, maybe one and a half. You don't see the glove logo, so a very weak left hand. What's also idiosyncratic is how he plays with this long left thumb and that right hand, the trail hand, or the bottom hand, really nestles up against the lead hand, and so you can see basically the tip of his glove thumb. That is out of the ordinary too, and as far as my memory serves, probably the only guy in the world's game that does that. So that's just Jordan, and remember, that's a weakened club face that he's going to strengthen up by flexing that lead wrist. So as we swing him back, two things to pay attention to. First off, the trail leg and watch that knee right through this area. See how it straightens? And as it straightens, it allows more wind up here through the core. Remember the turn and burn thing? Well, this is not on the downswing, this is turning on the way back. As it continues to go now, you'll see that lead wrist, which is in flexion, begin to flex even more. And at the top of the swing, the knuckles of that lead wrist basically point to the sky and get the face pointing to the sky as well. That is strong, that is a whole lot more closed. But here's one of his magic moves. If I zoom in right about here and we toggle back and forth, watch how Jordan replants that foot. See there? And if we do that a few times, you'll see where he is at the top. Watch how the heel travels inward. And then as he replants, he goes and plants it back down. If he had spikes, he would be creating a new set of spike holes. And what that is doing is it's allowing his lower body to shift forward. So there's pressure moving forward while he keeps the spine angle tilted back. So watch this. The lower body moves, it drives forward, the spine tilts back. And as the spine tilts back and he pushes with those legs, he is creating that upward angle of attack. Watch through impact. Spine backward, hips pushing up, foot rolling over, and right here, here is the money shot. That thing is so square and de-lofted. It's done so by the flexion in that lead wrist. It's done so with a little chicken winging of the elbow. It's certainly influenced by the tilting back of that spine. So all of the moves, all of the matchups, all the things that Jordan is doing, because if I showed you that picture and you were like, who's that guy and you didn't know who he was, you'd be like, chicken wing elbow, bad grip, look at the footwork. Well, all of these things happen consistently to give the ball the message he desires. And that de-lofted face with the upswinging angle of attack, that is the way to create high launch and low spin. From there, watch how the spine stays back, the elbow chicken wings a little bit right there, lots of tilt in the body, and from there now, he lets the elbow go, the club swings up and over his shoulder, and he is watching another powerful drive go down the middle of the fairway. And when Jordan plays from the fairway, with his iron game, with his wedge game, he can be lethal. Jordan Spieth has made his driver a weapon in the most accurate years of his career.
We saw him hit some really long drives, too. He has just started moving it. Yeah. Picked up a lot of speed. 178 mile an hour ball speed. A little bit of rollout. He'll be going for this par five and two, no doubt. That's a really, really aggressive line there. I, I like it. He's obviously feeling good with the good with his swing at the moment. By his own admission, Jordan Spieth has said that when he plays more golf and less golf swing, he tends to play better. Hence the success at places like Augusta National. At an open championship for argument's sakes, where you are asked to hit shots and not necessarily play a golf swing. At the plantation course, Kapalua, this image, and here on this par 3 11th, you're playing downhill, you're playing towards the ocean, it's a narrow green, well bunkered in front, and the wind is blowing, and so he's going to have to flight something down. And so here is a great model on how to do so. Only one real thing about the golf swing I do want to highlight, and that is a line there up the trail ankle and alongside the trailing leg. He's got the ball back in the stance. He's going to flight something down. Remember that. But now as he winds up, bear in mind that line because every great striker in the wind has never passed that red line. You see halfway back, there's actually a bit of a gap there between the kneecap, the thigh, and the red line. So that's him rotating, but him never shifting excessively over to his trail side because he's trying to cover a ball. He's trying to compress and flight this thing down. So a nice start there to the swing. As we get up to the top, he's trying to flight a golf ball so this won't be the full complement of the backswing, but even with the shorter arm swing, it's still a full turn of the body. Now as he drives down and goes just to impact and slightly beyond, look how the knuckles have turned down and right about there. Check out a couple things. How much he's created a gap from where that trail thigh initially was to where it is now. So basically, he's driven forward to cover the golf ball. Then as we zoom in here, remember to really get the golf ball to travel down or flight it, you have to deal off the face. So can you see how much that forward wrist is still in flexion? That's to deal off that shaft. If I take that away, look at this forward elbow, how it's still bowed, and look at the gap here between arms and body. His hips are turning out of the way, and his arms are swinging past him. What a great way to flight a golf ball down. Quiet feet, shaft de-lofted, and now from there, you won't see the full follow through. He'll just follow that up, keeping the wrist quiet, once again, very much in flexion, and now the body follows up to an abbreviated follow through, and another beautifully struck iron, cutting through that wind and traveling the right distance. Yeah, absolute green light here again from Jordan. Play the same shot, look at this. Played the same shot, he made it! Yes, he did. Oh man, how good is that? We turned some trash into treasure there. That was really good. This game will drive you crazy, but when you hit a shot like that, you're like, all's forgiven. How about that thunderbolt from Jordan Speed? He holds out from the fairway. He knows what he's doing. But what an incredible strike that was after that lie. He's been a man of the people since he broke out on tour. At the top of this analysis, I called Jordan a wizard with a wedge. Early in his career, I called him the American Seve, and that was my ode to the great Seve Ballesteros, who, in all of my years in golf, is really the best chipper and pitcher I have ever seen. Jordan rivals him, and it's some of the things that he does. We'll dive into that in just a minute. The first thing I do want to show you is, look, he's clearly on an upslope here. Now, if I show you how his body is angled toward that, there's a plumb line sort of down the buttons of his shirt. You notice how he doesn't really have his shoulders parallel with a slope, which is a mistake a lot of golfers do when they're trying to pitch or chip off an uphill. Look how Jordan is leaning toward the slope. He's got pressure on his forward leg. That positioning there is helping him to create ball first contact. What's also helping with some of that is how, if you look there, the ball is well back in his stance and his hands are slightly in front of the ball. There, of course, is the weak grip. That never changes throughout. 
but just a reminder, the weak grip does promote an open club face. So watch what Jordan does. As he swings back, we're going to highlight something at the top of the backswing. And then I want to say this to you. You'll hear many coaches, many players talk about, well, use the bounce of the golf club. Jordan Spieth, who is a great chipper and pitcher, sometimes does, sometimes he doesn't. And this instance, you'll see how he uses the front edge of the club more. And he does that because the knuckles there are down. Weak grip, down knuckles, face still a little open. But watch as he approaches impact now. We'll toggle it once or twice. He doesn't move much. The handle comes down. See how the knuckles are looking downward. And what I want to highlight here is how his shoulder is moving, the left shoulder. It moves down and away from the chip. You see, there's no early raising up. A lot of amateur golfers, in an effort to elevate the ball, will get that shoulder moving upwards. So one more time up and one more time down, and watch how that left shoulder moves down and away from his chin, and at contact, the club approaches the ground with a face looking downward, the leading edge presented, and watch how the club interacts with the turf. Handles forward, shaft is de-lofted, loft of the golf club is elevating the golf ball, and watch this now. Club digs into the turf, watch how the handle goes forward. The ball's still in the air, but it is well struck. Jordan is not afraid of moving the ball back, putting the leading edge in the ground, but he does so because the body is well situated, and I would advocate that you go and try this. Too often I see golfers leaning back, flicking their wrists, trying to elevate the golf ball, trying to show the bounce of the wedge, and they end up hitting all sorts of nasty shots. This guy, he's great, and you should try this. You called him the modern day Seve, and this was Seve-esque. How about that? Jordan Speed. I don't know how many times we've seen this guy hit these terrific shots around the green. And he jars it. Jordan Speed. A little bit of magic from off the green. Closing the door. Three-time major champion doing speed things. And he's going first. Can he do it again? Oh, Jordan Speed! He's done it again! Unbelievable!